All right, this is Dr. Koshel. This is going to be uh, batching for the third lab of superconductors and MSC 407. Uh, so I'm going to show you how to batch uh, these raw components. Um, to start with, safety-wise, I've got my normal uh, equipment on, uh, my lab coat, my gloves, and uh, long pants, closed-toed shoes, uh, etc. Everything that you're used to. So that is the normal. Um, we will have one additional piece. Uh, we have these disposable lab coats that I will put on top um, of my lab coat. Um, because we are dealing with a lot of powders, uh, and these powders have some toxicity, uh, we'll use this, and if any gets on uh, my lab coat during the, uh, the session, I can take this off uh, and we can dispose of this uh, in waste. So I'll be wearing uh, this today. I have to unbutton it first. This is the first of the videos, so uh, if me and Antonio make some mistakes, you know why. <laughs> Should have practiced putting on the lab coat. Definitely should have practiced putting on the lap coat. There we go. All right. So as I do this, I'll, I'll go with uh, go through the rest of the uh, batching procedure. Um, we have the three raw components that we will be using. Um, these are what are in your pre-lab. So you should already have the amounts. Uh, uh, but I'll sort of go over them briefly with you. Um, but we have uh, yttrium oxide, Y203. We have um, barium carbonate. And we also have uh, cupric oxide, so CuO. Uh, those are our raw components. So you should have that reaction, and you should have the uh, amounts that you need to produce 75 grams of the completed YBCO powder. Um, so I've got them here and I'm going to write them on the board mostly to help me remember what I'm doing. Um, so we are going to need 44.9774 grams of barium carbonate. Can you see that on the board? Okay. Um, so I'm putting a few decimals here because our balance uh, does go down to four decimals. Um, it's hard to get exactly that number, but we'll get as close uh, as we can. And if you've got a slightly different number than me, that's okay. Uh, you may have used different molecular weights or something, and so that is perfectly okay. But it should be close to 44.97. Uh, for copper oxide, we have 27.1947 grams. Again, uh, you should be pretty close on this number. And then the last one, we've got 12. 8666 for yttrium oxide. And so those are the three numbers that I'm going to be shooting for uh, when I weigh out these. And so when we talk about batching, that's just the fancy word uh, for weighing them out and adding them together. Uh, the next video that we'll have uh, will be on milling, and so we'll put those together uh, and get a nice even distribution. Uh, okay, so um, to start with, uh, this is the balance that we're going to be using um, over here. Uh, and we've also, uh, may have never used these in other classes or other labs, uh, but we've got these little aluminum weigh boats. Um, and these are to help with uh, the, uh, the powder. So we're dealing with some pretty fine uh, powders. Uh, and when you do that, uh, there can be a lot of static forces that cause them to basically kind of go everywhere. And so we're using these to, uh, metal weigh boat to help with that uh, problem. Um, if you use a plastic or a glass, something like that, you'll often have a lot more uh, static forces that are uh, at play there. So um, the first thing I'll do is I'll open up the, the balance. I'll put my weigh boat on. Uh, this one has uh, openings on both sides, and I'll show you why we're going to use that in a second. Uh, and then we are going to hit the tear button, which on this um, balance is just T, uh, but you'll see that once I hit that, it should go to zero. Um, you may see minor fluctuations uh, in that number, 
uh, that is to be expected. If you see too much, so if it's um, you know if it's past a couple um, on the fourth decimal scale uh, of that, then uh, you might have an issue. Uh, some part of the uh, balance might be open. So I'll check that everything is closed. There is a top uh, that can open as well. We're not going to use that, uh, but that's what it is. Uh, and then uh, so everything looks good. It's very stable um, at this moment. So. Uh, we've got that tour, or tear, I forget. <laughs> we had this discussion uh, in the previous lab. Um, so I'm going to start with the barium carbonate. So again, 44.9774. Um, and the barium carbonate is in this big uh, container here. So we've got a, a lot of it. Um, and so uh, this is um, our barium carbonate. Um, it's uh, from a different batch, but I'll put um, this uh, on the screen for you to see. This is uh, a similar barium carbonate uh, that we're using in this lab. Um, I think you can kind of see everything just in case. Hold it there so I can autofocus. All right, looks good enough. Um, so this is our barium carbonate. Uh, this is from, again, like I said, from a slightly different source, but we have it in a secondary bottle, so I don't have that to show you. So you can just use the, uh, the Alpha Azar uh, bottle there. Uh, so I'm going to take uh, from this bottle uh, to get our 44.9774. Um, so first of all, I've got a metal spatula here. Um, you never know where it's been before you use it, so I always clean them. And so I've got some type of uh, alcohol, in this case ethanol, onto a, a Kim wipe, a clean Kim wipe. Um, and then I'm going to wipe it down and just make sure that any powder or anything else that's on there uh, is cleaned off. All right, um, so ethanol will also dry quickly, so you don't have to worry about that. Uh, so I'll put this down here. Um, all right, so now um, I will uh, start with the barium carbonate. Again, it's a very large uh, bottle, uh, but what I'm going to do, and this will help with the mess, because uh, uh, as we kind of see when we look up the MSDS for barium carbonate, uh, is there's some toxicity here. So we don't want to ingest or get this on our skin or anything like that. And so we're doing this in a fume hood. Um, we are gonna take precautions with things like barium car carbonate, really any heavy metals, uh, we don't want those in our system. And so um, what I'm gonna do to minimize the mess is I'm gonna open both sides of the balance uh, and I'm gonna have the bottle on one side and I'm gonna have the spatula on the other side uh, in that case. So I'm just as close uh, to the weigh boat uh, as possible. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, get started with that. So I'm going to open both sides. Uh, open this container of barium carbonate. Uh, I don't think I'll have to actually lift it because it is so large. And then I'm going to start to scoop from this. Uh, and this is a pretty, what we call, fluffy powder. And so we might not be able to get all 44 grams into this one container. So if we cannot, we'll do it in batches. So I'm at around 10 grams. I'm sure this is a very exciting portion of the lab for you. Almost at 20, uh, but it looks like the way boat is filling up. So I'll get close to halfway, and then I will give you a reading here. All right. Uh, so to get an accurate reading, I'm going to need to close the uh, the sides there. 
and it's going to take a second to, uh, to reach equilibrium. Um, all right, that looks good. All right, so that is our halfway point. Uh, so this is 22.3. Five, three, two is what the uh, camera said. <laughs> uh, so that will be our uh, halfway point. Um, Antonio, can you calculate the uh, the half of that for me while I get the rest of it? Antonio is uh, on the camera today uh, for this video. I think you'll shortly see him in action in one of the videos to come. I'm going to write your result on the board. Right. Thank you. Um, and just for an update on what's happening over here, um, I have opened the, the balance and I'm dumping the uh, barium carbonate that I had in the wayboat uh, into the giant mortar and pestle. And I'll show you that uh, more in a, uh, in a second here. Uh, but this is what we're going to actually do the milling in uh, in a second. So. Um, that has been added, and I'm going to re-tear uh, the balance, and then we'll get started shortly here. And we're going for 22.6242 now. All right, so the balance is tore again. I'm going to go with that verbiage, um, and so I'll, again, I'll, I'll go for that 20. 2.6242, and we'll try to get as close uh, to that as possible. So back to the, the same thing that I was doing a second ago. Trying to spill as little as possible. Doing a decent job. We're at about 16 grams. Again, we'll get when we get close here. I'll have Antonio zoom in on the balance so you can see the readout. So when we get close, uh, a thing we can do with these spatulas, and I'll try to illustrate this a little better, it might be a little hard to see here. Um, Antonio, do you want to come up on my left side? It's our first video, so I'm hoping this will kind of figure out how to do things. But So one thing we can do is when we get close, and you can see I'm at 21.77, um, instead of just scooping the large amounts, I can get a small amount on my spatula and kind of tap it. So I'm just kind of tapping the end of the spatula to try to get a small amount at a time. So I'm just kind of tapping and then constantly looking at the readout. Uh, and so the reason I do this is this way I don't have to subtract uh, that much powder. So I want to kind of minimize how much I take out uh, from the powder because that I'm not going to want to put back in this container. I'm going to put that in the waste just because that's a good practice to have is to, to never put back anything in the primary container. Um, so I'll do a little bit more here if I can actually get some. All right, same thing. I've got some on my spatula and I'll kind of tap. Uh, and we're getting pretty close here. And that is pretty close. I'll do a little bit more because uh, we do want, oh, sorry, I'm wrong. We want to do, get 
I would say we're going to edit that out, but I don't think I'm going to. So um, if you ever do get exactly the amount you need and you don't need to subtract any, uh, one thing that uh, we, we can kind of uh, avoid is then, again, taking stuff out. Because anytime I take it out, I'm going to uh, put it in the, the waste container that I'll show you here uh, in a second. The other thing is if you feel comfortable, uh, when you get close enough, you can kind of close a little bit so that the, the reading is a little bit more accurate with the, without the sort of... Um, the sort of wind or current that's happening inside the fume hood. All right, so um, we got a reading there. Um, we're a little over, so I'll show you how to uh, subtract uh, here in a second. So we're at 22.67 approximately. Um, so I'll take out a little bit so we can get closer to that 22.62 number. Um, so same thing, spatula. And then we're going to try to take out as little as possible and try to get it to that reading. If you take out too much, you can kind of, again, use that tapping technique to go back. And again, I'm not going to put it back in the original bottle. I'm going to set it here for a second while I uh, get the rest of this. And so one thing that I should practice myself here is that get as close as you can, but don't worry about the uh, very low decimal places here. Um, we'll do a calculation of this later, but you'll see that the error that we have is very uh, minimal. So uh, Antonio, did you get a reading of that? All right, so that is your second mass of barium carbonate. Uh, and so we're going to use that for our calculations. Um, I put the barium carbonate in this little Kim wipe, uh, so I didn't just like throw it anywhere. I didn't put it back in the original container. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put it in these waste containers that Nancy has uh, made for us. She is safely off campus, <laughs> and so uh, she set up the lab, but uh, we're going to do it in her place. So uh, normally she would be teaching you how to do all this, uh, probably better. Um, so I'm going to close up this container because I am done with it. Um, again, I'm going to take my amount of barium carbonate that I have weighed out. I'm going to get it out of the furnace, or sorry, out of the balance here, uh, and I'm going to add it to the mortar. So this is our uh, mortar here. Uh, you can see it's fairly uh, large. Uh, this is what we're going to be using for, for milling next. Um, but uh, we've got our mortar, and then we've got our pestle, so we look like a uh, pharmacist here. So that's what we're going to be using uh, in the next video. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and tear again, and then we are going to start with the next, which is the copper oxide. So this is our copper oxide. I'll try to, to bring it to the camera. There's some auto-focusing happening here, so I'll try to back further. All right, well, we'll we can also take, uh, we will probably uh, take a fair amount of pictures of things uh, and upload them to the share folder. So if you aren't able to read that uh, on your screen uh, where this is uploaded, uh, keep in mind we will be able to take photos. Um, also, uh, if anything is unclear, um, obviously you would normally be in the lab doing this yourself and be able to check. Um, so we're going to be able to, uh, uh, to have you ask questions and if, if you have any questions we can kind of track down those answers for you. Uh, if you're wondering batch numbers, whatever that sort of stuff is, we can look that up uh, for you. So that is the copper oxide that we'll be using. Um, I have tor uh, teared the, uh, the scale here, uh, and then I'm going to start doing the, the same thing that I did with the barium. I'm going to wipe down, again, almost forgot here, wipe down the spatula, because I'm going to use the same spatula as I did for the barium carbonate, so there is still a little barium carbonate 
on that. So I'm going to clean that off just so I don't contaminate this for the next person that wants to use that, that chemical. All right. So this one uh, is a little heavier. Um, you can't feel this at home, but this container uh, probably weighs about the same as the other one. Uh, so it's a lot denser than that barium carbonate. Um, so, uh, but I'll use the same uh, practices and I'm going for 27.1947 approximately. And I'm able to get the bottle a lot closer uh, with this one since it isn't so large. You can see I'm already at 14. I have to periodically remind myself what the mass is. And again, once I'm getting close, I'm going to use that tapping technique. I'm getting pretty close there. Maybe once. All right, overshot it. That is fine. Um, again, in this case, I probably put too much on the spatula. So I'm going to put this on that Kim, Kim wipe. Um, so I usually don't like to waste that much, but it is what it is. All right, that looks pretty close. We'll close it up and see what the reading gives us. About as good as I'm gonna get today for that one. All right. So uh, one thing you'll often see is that that number can kind of tick up uh, over time. Uh, so a number of things could be happening here. Uh, the balance could be coming to equilibrium um, or in some cases, the powders can actually pick up water and things from the atmosphere, and that can cause them to, to continually to go up. In this case, it looks like it's kind of stabilized uh, there at that reading. Um, we'll watch it for a second more, but yeah, it looks like it's around that reading. So I will um, uh, leave it there for this one. And again, um, I will add this to the mortar and pestle. I'll try to get as much off as possible. Uh, on this one, uh, what we'll do um, is, I'll have Antonio come over here. Um, so on this one, the um, a lot of it's stuck on the bowl here. Uh, and so we want to get that uh, number as close to what you have written down in your lab notebook. Uh, so what I'll do on this is, on the next step, we're going to add ethanol to help the milling process. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and clean this weigh boat with ethanol where basically I'm trying to clean everything that's in this boat um, into the mortar and pestle. So uh, I'm going to just use the ethanol and do this. So the milling process we're going to do is in uh, this ethanol so we can kind of use that uh, anyway. And so I, I'll try to add uh, as little as I can here but uh, just enough to kind of get all of that copper oxide off. That way, the number that we wrote down is the number that's inside this mortar and pestle to start with. So we know what our ratio um, is. Um, okay, so this is clean, um, but it's also covered in ethanol. Um, there could be a little bit of copper oxide here. So what I'm gonna do is just to be safe, I'm gonna put this in our waste. Um, in general, if it has any trace of our, uh, our materials, we'll put it in the waste. So just like before, um, I had some extra copper oxide here. Uh, I'm gonna get rid of that as well into this waste container. All right, so we've got two of the three down.
uh, close that back up. Uh, and then we can start on the last one, which is the yttria. Again, cleaning off the spatula as your headless instructor tells you to clean up this room. That's fine. <laughs> I think it's probably better the, for all of us if, if I'm not shown here. You can add a, uh, uh, a post-it above your screen to just you know, be my face on that. Um, okay, so um, I'm going to start with the new uh, wave boat on this one since we disposed of the other. Um, tear it again. Um, and then we'll start on the Itria, and I'll show this on the screen, and we'll try to get that as good as we can. Oh, that one. And then this way as well, just in case you want to read all the little things on there, all the little hazards. All right, so that's our Itria. Again, a much smaller bottle, so this should be a lot easier to use. Um, also, we're using less of it, so 12.8666 is what we're shooting for. Uh, he balances uh, tore, tear. We had this discussion and I can't remember the results of it. So um, I will again go through the same uh, process and see if we can get this mount. Getting closer to the end here. So sometimes these uh, big pieces kind of form clumps, and so you can't always get the best or as close as you really want. So you do what you can and then re remove if you need to. Okay, overshot it a little bit here. So again, same thing, I'm gonna take out a little bit and I don't wanna put it back in the original container. <laughs> Takes some adjustments. Again, these this powder forms these kind of clumps and so it can be kind of difficult to get exactly the amount you need so we're just gonna do this as slowly as we need to do all right that is pretty close i will close that up and let antonio get a good reading there and i'll dispose of this while he's getting that All right, so uh, we've got those readings. Um, again, like I'm, uh, like I explained to you in the intro video. Um, so one of the things you're going to want to do as we go along in these videos is make sure that you're writing down the values just like you would um, in lab. And so um, make sure you read, write down those masses because this is your reading uh, for for those values. So uh, this is the last one. I'm going to add this to the mortar and pestle, and I'm going to have Antonio come over here just so you can kind of see what it looks like inside here. Um, so one of the things you always kind of want to note as well is the kind of physical state of these chemicals. Um, so the, the yttrium and barium carbonate are white, and then the copper oxide is black. Uh, and so right now you can kind of see those individual particles. Uh, in the mortar and pestle. And so you kind of want to make a note of that because as we do the next step on the next video, uh, which is to mill, uh, you're going to see 
that as we mill this together, uh, there's going to be some changes in the physical appearance. And so make sure you kind of know what that is. Uh, same thing here on this one. There was some powder uh, left over. Uh, so I got rid of it with some ethanol and I'm going to dispose uh, of that. Um, so we've got our batching done. Um, as a reminder, and it'll say in the captions and so forth, uh, this is going to be Monday B, their batching uh, for the, uh, the lab. Uh, we will have photos for Monday A. We'll explain all this in the, uh, the captions, but this was the batching for Monday B, uh, but everybody can look at this for the overall process. So I'll end it there. And then the next video you'll watch is for milling. So I'll see you in a bit.